Hi everybody and welcome back to my XCOM 2 Iron Man let's play <clears throat> on Commando difficulty. So we just finished our first Gorilla Ops and got our first Engineer. So I'm gonna start, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna start building here. And the first, the first thing I'm gonna build is the Gorilla Tactics School because this will allow us to take more people on missions which is one of the most important upgrades in the game okay so I will see what's next I guess I think next we Okay, so now we have to uh, make contact here. Oh, for this I have to research something first. But I put magnetic weapons up, so it's not going to happen for a little bit. I might have been a little fast with that one, but uh, magnetic weapons are really important. But I probably can't even buy the upgrade when I get it. We'll see. But if I do get magnetic weapons really fast, it's going to be very helpful and we got some rookies i don't actually know why i look for that because it's not actually useful we don't want to research for six days to get um, a single soldier because at this point the soldier is gonna be really bad and it's not gonna be worth spending six days just to get a single soldier So basically we're just running down our uh, time to get this was really fast I'm, I'm still used to the time frames um, of of legendary diffi or legend difficulty which is everything's basically doubled takes forever I don't think we can buy the upgrade yet we need a sergeant first but we can use our single engineer to excavate the next part of our base which is what she's gonna tell us right now Brom. so we're gonna excavate this yes yes shut up Good luck. 
So this is basically our first cohort, cohort ops, I guess. But uh, this is a great mission. It's actually a lot of fun. I like this mission very much. Not sure how long our contacts are going to wait for and we're getting a scientist, which is not so bad. Okay, so we get to do two squads, like he said. Um, I think this is fine. I don't. I, I think he can't heal people yet. I think he needs to. Yeah, so he can do eight protocol, which is fine. I don't think it matters really who we put with whom or anything. I think this mission will go fine, anyways. I hope we'll see. Um. Oh yeah, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, my my ranger is injured, so I'm gonna have to take a rookie. Which is fine. It'll be fine. Everything is fine. Nothing bad will happen. XCOM is a very nice game. Doesn't fuck you up, anyways. I'm I'm really surprised at how much easier um, Commander is than Legend. But probably get get harder. Or maybe not, maybe I'll just freeze through it, probably not. Yeah, so this is a two-part mission, and both parts are pretty good, I think. I like both of them. And we get introduced to the new two heroes that we'll get now. And they are basically super soldiers, or they're really useful soldiers. You'll see me use the Reaper quite a lot. Like how in Firecamp of my people in the first years of the war. 
Yeah. So basically, uh, Reapers are more concealed than everybody else, and they don't get revealed when the rest of your squad gets revealed, uh, which everybody else does, unless you have some rangers with certain upgrades. Um, but basically, what you do is, or what I do is, I use them for as a scouting unit. So I try in this. Uh, in this case it's probably not going to be very important but i try using reapers in order to find different pots and um yeah so basically we're getting introduced to a new kind of enemy so I basically use Reapers in order to scout. So I can just go here without having a problem because the Reaper needs to be directly adjacent to a different, to a pot in order to trigger it. So I can always use the Reaper to make sure that I don't run into a pot and can't react to it. So the Reaper is very, very useful in higher difficulties. And I actually placed my sniper really <laughs> poorly here because he doesn't have a very good line of sight. Okay, so these are lost, and basically as long as we kill them, it doesn't cost us an action. So in this case, I'm gonna reveal my Reaper directly, because I don't really... Lost aren't exactly the hardest opponents, and the Reaper is a, um, much more accurate than my Sniper is now. A little bit more accurate. Well, maybe I'll just start off with my Sniper. So as long as we kill them with our primary attack, like this, um, yeah, so that's basically explaining what I did. Um, as long as we kill them with our normal attack, um, we can keep going, which is especially useful with the snipers because they are pretty accurate and they don't miss shots very much. So, for example, here we could take out the entirety of a, of, a, um, of a pod and it didn't even cost us an action. Additionally, snipers have a secondary weapon in the pistol and the pistol doesn't have to be reloaded. So if I reload this gun now, it will cost me an action, sniper, and that's one of the main problems with the sniper and one you have to watch out for is the reloads because now I wouldn't be able to shoot anything with my sniper anymore so I have to make sure that my sniper is always reloaded okay but we were able to take care of that pot with just one action basically because we had to reload so we can just keep going and um, the last don't take cover this means that uh, as they're very easy to hit especially for our reaper and uh, the way XCOM works is if you can see a pot they can see you too so in this case I'm sure only these two can see me so I can attack them pretty um, I can attack them freely and every time you do an action um, the Reaper has a chance to reveal the first action gives you a 50% chance and this will give you an 80% chance you will probably get revealed here but it doesn't really matter that you're just playing against lost and um, yeah so it doesn't really matter 
So I'm also gonna reload my gun here and not move because ammo is the most important thing on last missions. I'm gonna move him uh, so far that I definitely won't run in. But actually it doesn't matter because the lost can't really move that far at this point in the game. So even if I encounter a new pot it won't really nothing really will happen. So they won't mess me up. And in this case we encountered them on their turn so they can't even act yet. Which is good. Yeah, so basically I'm just gonna use my sniper as much as possible because I don't really lose anything from using him because he is useless anyways if I don't use him. So right here I'm gonna reload my gun again just to make sure I have ammo for the next round. Then I'm gonna move the Reaper and something that's also important about Reapers is that now I'm first gonna move him to make uh, to trigger this part hopefully and get them into line of sight of my reaper. Oh, the pot is already triggered. I'll just shoot them. Um, even if I miss, it's not really that big of a deal. So here, if I move him, I'll probably find another pot. I'm not sure actually because this is a really early mission, but I could find another pot and there is already a revealed enemy right here. So basically we're just gonna put him into overwatch so he hopefully takes out that enemy if he, uh, on the next turn when they move. And I'm just basically gonna move her up because to be honest, the, the last at the beginning of the game don't do very much and they're not, they're always the easiest enemies basically even though the music is very, very um, active. Yeah, so this was the best case scenario. So basically I am going to move my uh, specialist first uh, to see if we find another Part with him. Here we go, we did. And then I'm gonna see if I can hit them with my sniper. Which kind of slows down the game, but I don't know. If he misses, it slows down the game because it'll cost him an entire turn. So now I can't see anybody else with my sniper, so I'm gonna move him up because I still have two shots in my gun. Um, now I'm here and I can't see anybody else. So I am going to move him here because spoiler alert, we only have to go here and these are probably the last enemies we're gonna see, which is fine. So now we're gonna shoot with him because he's basically free. We don't really expect him to hit as much. And since we're already positioned around here we're just gonna put him on overwatch um, her oh what's also important to note if you're if you only have lost you don't really need to take cover because they uh, they're a melee unit and I don't think you you benefit from cover at all so you don't really need to take that into account I'm pretty sure that that's the end for this mission, but I'm just gonna reload just in order to make sure because we don't really wanna um, go into the third part of the of this mission injured. I will move him here to see. Oh, I actually thought I was moving my uh, specialist, but 
doesn't matter. I usually like to poke out with the least accurate unit. Oh, there's actually more, so it actually did matter. Okay, so this is not so good, but I don't think they'll be able to reach us and do damage to us. What we are going to do is um, try to see if we can find a place where we can see anybody with him. But I don't think it's possible. So we kind of put them in a bad position, but I don't think it will matter. I don't think they can move that far and attack. Basically, I'm just going to move him up too because it probably doesn't matter. I hope. We'll see. So that I... If they don't attack, I can just um, move them into the the ending area without shooting the loss. But I think I'm probably going to shoot the loss just for the XP. So reloading costs me an action. Yeah. So so like I said, I start off with my least accurate unit, and since he hit everything, it's fine. I'll just move everybody into the extraction zone. And that is the gonna be the end of the first part of the mission, which went really smoothly. But this is not the hard part. Yeah, so now we get introduced to the second hero, which is Praetor Mox. Um, it's also a very useful class, but it's, it's more of an offensive class, and I liked using the Reaper in Legend difficulty because a lot of the time if you run into a pod on your turn, it can end close to the end of your turn where you don't really have any actions left. Uh, this often means that your entire squad gets killed, so... That is why Reapers are incredibly uh, important. They're not, they don't do very much damage and a lot of the time you don't want to attack with them because it can reveal them. Um, but having them is still very important even though your total uh, damage goes down. So he should definitely get a tan at some point because he looks real weird.
Okay, so the skirmisher is our second hero we get here, and he is um, he has some key abilities and that he can grapple. This means he can move to a higher surface that is uh, in, in in a certain air uh, close to him. Um, he can pull enemies towards him and melee them, which with this attack, and he can just shoot and uh, move in a in any way you want to. He can also attack twice on the same turn, which is very useful. So he's a very versatile unit. He doesn't really do extreme amounts of damage unless you attack twice, um, but he's very useful because he's so versatile. So basically I'm gonna just move them here um, because this way we can pretty much ensure that we're not gonna um, trigger a pop, which might be bad. I don't really want people to get injured because this mission is quite long actually and we're gonna use the um, same people. Okay, so I can now show you his um, ability. So he can grapple up to here so we can move quite far without using an action. This has a little cooldown, but not very much. So I'll move him here. So now we've only used one action, which is very useful. Don't remember seeing these things before. You were not meant to. Purifier was created with a singular purpose to contain the rock chest, the box. We must eliminate this patrol quickly before others arrive. Fine by me. Take them down. Okay, so the problem with purifiers is that they can explode sometimes and uh, since we have a melee unit here I don't really want to kill them using melee so I'm gonna do this very defensively they don't really do much uh, they just do an area of effect uh, fire attack which a lot of the time doesn't even set you on fire so I'm just gonna be really defensive in this case because I really don't want anybody to get injured. Um, that is why I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use Overwatch on these two and move him hopefully out of the range of the purifiers because I also don't want him to get set on fire. Because if we lose any of these, if we move our lose our Reaper or our um, or our skirmisher, we probably won't get another one. So you really need to be careful not to scratch the paint. So you can see they, I think they both needed two, two turns just to get to me. And the way I'm gonna approach this is I'm gonna be really offensive. So according to target preview, I can see both of them. I can see one, also um, I'm not really sure if, I, it would make sense that cover um, influences how likely you are to get set on fire. We also don't want to use um, grenades, I think, because it'll spawn uh, loss or it can spawn loss. I'm not sure. If it's in this, so I have um, him flanked, and hopefully I'll kill him with this shot, but I'll just miss, which is the other possibility. So now we are kind of in a little bit of a, we kind of have a little bit of a problem. I also can't really move him there. Because if this purifier explodes, it will definitely hurt uh, mobs a lot, and I can't heal them right now. So I'll put her here, since she's definitely the least um, valuable unit, and she can't even kill them, which is bad. Um, so I will grenade them, even though I said I wouldn't. Um, grenades in this game, uh, so I can't hit both of them, no matter what I do. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to take the L on that one. 
I will try to kill at least one of them. And um, it's gonna be this one, and I think someone's gonna get set on fire, probably both of those girls. If Mox, well, Mox has two shots, but he can't hit the other one, so. Where did the other one go? Oh, I think I, I don't know what happened to him. Oh, whatever, I'll shoot this one and then we'll just have to deal with what happens next. Oh, there he is. I will put him on overwatch and, but I don't think he does enough damage to one shot the um, purifier. Yeah, exactly. So he's gonna, the purifier is going to set these two on fire, I think. Nope, he didn't, which is good. A lot of the time they just don't do anything, which is, but I'm, probably not going to be able to move these two units. So can I move, like for example her, I can't move at all. She will get set on fire no matter what happens. If I keep her where she is right now, she at least has a chance of not getting set on fire. But I do believe that if I shoot him, he will explode. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it, I hope he doesn't set the car off. I don't think he will. The way I'm going to do it is I'll move her here, she'll be set on fire, but she won't take damage immediately. So I am, next I'm going to use her since she's still, she's flanking him to shoot him. And if she hits the shot, which she didn't, because she sucks and I hate her, uh, that would have been good. He has a 62% shot twice of hitting him. So I'm going to not move him because then i can shoot at no i shit i can only shoot at him once but it was good enough She's not gonna take damage on this turn. I can hunker down to put out the fire, which is what exactly what I'm gonna do. It also improves the chance of them not getting hit if you're in a bad position. Basically on this turn, I'm just gonna move a little bit because I don't want to, well, I don't know. I think it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I can probably move him to here without... I don't think there's another part on this mission until you'll see like the next part of the mission starts. If that starts, I should have a fresh, um, fresh round to work with. But in case it doesn't, I'll just wait here. And I will move her up because I think that will put us into the next part of the mission. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so basically what this teaches us is that we shouldn't do explosions on lost missions if we can avoid it, because it will just cause more loss to spawn. 
So you just missed your 70% chance, which is great. Um, the dashers can move much further than the other ones can. I will put him... No, I don't think I can see anyone from here. So I'll just put him here. So you probably can't see anybody, that's fine. Oh, you can. That's good. That's a 60% chance, which is bad. Yeah. That was to be expected. Um, I'll try again with her, but she can only see one from here. So That's also a 66%, so she probably missed two. She didn't. Um, I think it's more useful to reload her gun than to um, actually put her into overwatch in this case. Because she'll probably just waste one shot. So the dashes can move much further. Then, then the normal loss can. So basically I'm just going to start off with the units that are closest to the lost until they miss or the lost are dead. Yeah, so she... No, she actually didn't miss, but she missed. Okay, so now she didn't kill that lost, which means... Oh, he actually has really good aim. That's good. So I can just definitely kill these two and then reload his gun. I, I think I'll just keep shooting them. Well, okay, um, with her, I'm just going to put her closer to the other two so that the loss go to a single point and the um, chance of us missing shots is, is smaller. Because if all three miss their shots, this uh, you're going to have a problem. Okay, so this, this round went really well. I'm just gonna use him because he has the best aim. Okay, not for that one. That one, I'm okay. So we don't see any more loss, so I'm definitely gonna reload her gun. And she has a full gun, so I'll just shoot the loss. I wasn't really expecting her to hit that one because apparently 70% is 0%. Oh shit, he actually had. He was actually able to see that cost. So you kind of want to avoid um, starting the, the round off with a reload because then you'll have three, like you're, you're, you can kill three loss less in a... Oh my gosh, this is really bad. I hate her so much. She actually can't hit shit. She's, I think she's missed three 70% chances in a row. And you really can't see that loss, can you? That is incredible. That's just, that's just dandy. And he can't either. So I'll overwatch him and her. Well, 
Oh, she actually hit one. That's great. So lost swarms are basically just a group of mostly bad, like the the standard lot. She might actually get hit on this one. No, she didn't. Um, I think at this point what you can do if you want to is just run for it. I don't think they can catch you. Um, but I'm going to do it for the XP. And hopefully just kill them all. But probably miss like 80% shots. We'll see. So I'm basically just going to take it slow. Because why not? You just should really avoid getting people injured, which is really bad. Okay, so this isn't really good either. I'll move her closer so she has a... Well, she only has one bullet, so... It's I shouldn't have reloaded her gun there. That's just dumb. Uh, we'll just try. Can you do 370% chances in a row? Uh, four? No. She hit it. It always looks like they're missing what they do hit them. Okay, so this is a 50% shot, so I'm... Well, he has two, two moves, so it's fine. I can just... Without much problem. So even if he misses like he did, I can just reload the gun. And... Um, hope that we're not close enough to any of the lost to get injured. I'm not actually sure if they spawn a mob on every single round. Well, that happens probably. Now they don't spawn on them every single round, but I think she's gonna get injured, which is bad. She got really injured, which is really bad. So did he. Yeah, so maybe I should have just run for it. But I'm not actually sure if he can make it past. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with Mox, since he probably has 100% chances to not kill this lost, which is great. Okay, so he's definitely gonna kill this one. Because it only had 3 HP. And now we're basically out of actions with him. Which is really bad. So I hope she hits that guy. Yeah, so like I said, I'm going to take it slow and I hope the rookie doesn't die because that would be bad and I definitely hope um, Mox doesn't die because, like I said, you're not going to get another one. With the, other with the normal soldier classes, you can just make, make new ones, basically. So I am not going to... I don't think I'm going to move any further. I think I killed all the lost. All the lost. Well, maybe. Maybe I can just keep... I can just go for it, I think, at this point. I think even if they spawn a new... M maybe there's... I don't know if there's pots on this part of the mission. So this means um, there's going to be a mob that spawns on the next turn. We can, which is fine, because if we can reach the extraction zone with him in the next turn, which should be easy, because he can just go here, I think here, yeah, let's go here. I don't think that uh, that traffic light actually counts as an object, so we can just teleport here. And extract him next turn, I'm just gonna put him on overwatch the um 
I can extract her, but I can't extract her, so I'm gonna move her up just slightly. Reload her gun um, and put the other two reload her gun too. I don't think it matters at this point, but um, and just put the other two in Overwatch, so maybe they'll get uh, a little XP. But I don't think it really matters unless they block me in, because the even though they spawn on this turn, like this looks bad, but they can't actually attack on this turn. I love that aim, it's like Call of Duty, shooting out the side of your gun. So at this point I'm not gonna risk injuring them any further and just extract them. And in this case you extract her first because she only had a couple of spaces that she was able to go so you really don't want to block her in. Um, I also have a med kit that I can use soon. Oh, we'll see. Not well, we're in the first week to be waiting for the arrow. I know the more you do, the attack. I have to believe it'll still be worth it in the end. Without the clip, I'll go reload. Yeah, so this is a very interesting character development. Um, yeah, so at the beginning of this part of the mission, they hate each other and then they're like best friends. God damn it. Actually, okay, so the thing is, the um, assassin spawns in the next round and she will actually 
do an attack which I can do nothing about. If she hits Mox, she'll kill him, probably. I don't really care if she kills my rookie, who is much more injured than Mox is. And she's gonna attack in two rounds, I think. Um, so I'm gonna heal Mox in the next round to make sure he doesn't get one shot. I hope he can't get one shot. Um, because that would just be shit. I can put her back into a hiding which is important because I really also don't want her to die. I, if she is my, well, she's probably gonna be my most valuable unit for most of the game, so I really, really don't want her to die, especially since she has five HP now, which is terrible. Um, so basically what I'll do is I'll position her here. Actually, you know what? We are going to position everybody um, okay, so, so what's important to know is that this, um, I think the assassin is guaranteed to not trigger it, uh, trigger overwatch fire. I'm not sure. I think that might be random. So I'll just position everybody in the middle of the map because the assassin attacks and then, uh, hides somewhere. And if she gets to hide in the building, um, I'm basically in trouble because I can't reach her and she just keeps attacking my people. So I'm gonna go in the back part of this map so she doesn't get the possibility to go into this building because that is the worst case scenario. I'm also gonna put these people on overwatch because I hope that, so you can see there's a border of the map. So she, she is gonna spawn right here and she's gonna move towards me. So if I have a little bit of time, um, I'm gonna put her on overwatch. I'm definitely gonna put her in the back since she has so little health. I'm not sure if the assassin, since the assassin is a melee unit for the most part, um, if um, she's influenced by cover at all. I don't think so. Okay. So Mox still has a move. Um, so. I don't know, I think I will also move him even though I really need to heal him. Um, no, I'll leave him here so I can heal him in the beginning of the next round. I'll also put her in a spot where the assassin is not very likely to walk right past her. Because if uh, the assassin walks right past her, she'll be revealed and then she might die. And I really don't want that. Okay, so she does not trigger overwatch or reaction fire, which is really bad. I hope that was random. Um, this means she is gonna attack. She's also invisible, so she's gonna attack one time without me being able to do anything about it, which is just bullshit in my opinion. And I really need to kill her in one turn if I can, because she's gonna fuck up my entire team basically which is bad because I don't want them to I don't want her to fuck up my team um yeah so what this means for us is that it really doesn't matter if we put anyone into overwatch so our first priority should be to reload all the guns and move people to the back of the map so they don't our first priority is to heal Mox because we really don't want him to die. I will also put these people out. I'll put him out a little further so she acts as bait a little bit, but still far away from the building. I guess I really don't want her to go back into the building. It will really, it's a big problem. So I can move, um, I can't target her. She's somewhere around here, I guess. Um, I can't target her unless I run into her directly on this turn. So I'm gonna have to basically wait for her to attack me, which is shit, I think. I feel like. I hate that. 
I hate that part because she can just basically one shot one of my heroes, or she can one shot Mox at least because she shouldn't be able to see Dragunova. And I'm also going to put Mox in between my people, so she's hopefully less likely to attack him. I will also move her closer to the rest, but still in a position where she's not likely to get run into. So I'll put her here because I think um, the assassin will take belt will go this way. And it doesn't matter if we use both of our turns because um, the overwatch does nothing anyways. Oh yeah. so we're just gonna reload our guns and wait for one of our people to die, I guess. Your so gun is full and you're probably gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so she will take an additional turn to get close to me. Sometimes the lost spawn and run into her, which is, reveals her, which is good. Um, I am also gonna use uh, put the rookie oh I don't know I don't know if it matters I kind of don't want them to get hit by AoE because she does have AoE of course I especially don't want Mox to get hit at all um, so I will put him closer to the others or maybe this is a terrible idea. Oh, I revealed her. That is really good. I can attack her on this turn, which is really, really good. Okay, so I could shoot her, but I don't want to. What I'm going to do is I am going to put my um, Claymore here because this does a lot of damage to her. So this was really lucky that we got her on this round so we can attack her before she attacks us and maybe even kill her so that would be that would just be amazing um can you hit the claymore yeah so she's gonna shoot the claymore which should do a lot of damage to the assassin yeah so sh it did 14 damage so maybe she'll just despawn right now that's good so I was worried about nothing. She actually, it that was such a lucky get that we got to find her. Okay, so now this is real. This is really, really lucky. I can't even tell you. I've never had this mission go this well. Um, we are going to basically keep moving now because I think now there's going to be um, a lost pot that spawns on every turn, and I might use him to shoot at the lost first. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start next round. Maybe I'll hit some, I probably won't. Oh, okay. Because I do want to keep moving, but I don't want to run into them. Okay, so I'll move him with his final action. I shouldn't have put him next to our um, our Reaper because if uh, a lost walks if a lost walks past uh, to attack him, um, the lost is gonna run into the Reaper. So that's the reason why I'm gonna put her out as bait. 
basically because I don't want to review my Reaper because I want to know where the different pods are at all times so I can control the situation basically um, him I think since he has um, full full HP he's gonna take at least three hits of any loss to kill him I am gonna put him onto overwatch to hopefully kill one of the last that's Okay, so they're spawning every three rounds, I think, which is much easier. I thought that on Legend they spawned every round. I'm not sure though. So they do one to two damage. So these with the who basically don't have any HP I can just shoot with my pistol which doesn't need to be reloaded because I don't know why it's just is that way but the, the pistol does 1 to 2 damage uh, 2 to 3 damage so if I get a 100% chance like here and the um, the um, oh shit that gun that car is gonna explode this means we are gonna uh, the loss are gonna spawn quicker um, because um, sharpshooters have a higher accuracy um, they can also hit pretty reliable with their pistol and they're really good at taking out lost mobs at the beginning of the game but later when they have more life and the pistols don't really get very good except for one um, okay, so I don't want to put you next to the car that's about to explode. I'll put you here. And I move the Reaper up so I would see if there was a lost mob that I would trigger, which I really don't want to because they would be able to attack on the lost turn and uh, injure my people. So I'm going to move him up here. So I have one straggler. That's you. But that's okay, I guess. Well, it's he's not that much of a struggle. Also, um, the Reapers can move further if they're... Yeah, so this is the problem part, though. The Reapers can move further if they're not revealed. Which makes them even more useful as a scouting unit. And you can get an upgrade. You can get an upgrade so they um, never lose vision of of enemies they've seen, which is important. Okay, so basically I'm going to go, I'm gonna use, where is he? I'm gonna teleport him up here because he has a pretty good aim stat and I will probably be able to take out these two. I should have moved my Reaper up first to see if there's a mob there, which I can still do. Okay, so I want to move my Reaper uh, somewhere where she's not going to be run into by Lost, which is going to be here. I'm going to move her here, so I should get a pretty good look at most of the map over there. Okay, so I still have my Reaper if I need an accurate shot. So I don't actually know if I'll trigger a mob if I move him here. I can't see anything from here. I'll move him here instead. And he's not allowed to miss. Oh shit, one of the last has 4 HP, which means it's over his minimum damage. But that doesn't matter because we found more. So this is what I wanted to avoid. They can actually attack me in the next round, which is really bad. Um, I'm actually thinking of moving Mox away. But I think he needs three hits to die. But I think I'm gonna move him back anyways. And well, I can still use my Reaper as in case I need to. 
this is a really sketchy situation so this is not the way you're supposed to do this so i'm gonna move him away from the loss as far as i can right here I actually sh I think I still have an action with my Reaper. Um, I'm gonna move him up as far as possible to be able to help in the next round, hopefully. And again, you don't really need cover against the loss because I don't think it does anything. I will move him, her up. Wait, she's the injured one, so I should move her up very close to, because she's a prunt. This is also a big mistake I made. So my Reaper is um, directly in the path I would expect the loss to take. So she's going to be revealed. So what I am going to do is not use her at all and just move her out of the way so she doesn't get um, revealed, which would be the worst. So now we have a lot of loss, uh, so we're going to have to deal with them on this turn. I don't think my sniper is in a good enough position to actually shoot them, except for the ones that charge now. It should might be good enough, I guess. He's going to take two hits, which does three damage. So basically at the beginning of the mission they hate each other and now they're the best friends, which is very good. Okay, so I can't move him or else I can't use his sniper anymore. So I will hopefully take three shots with his sniper then move him. Okay, I will just miss the first 75% chance. This is bullshit. So I'm probably going to have to use my Reaper on this turn and reveal her. Because I really need to make sure Mox doesn't die. I, I think it might even be game over. So this loss has 3 HP and this one has 4 HP. Which means I will shoot this one first. And then I actually don't know if I should shoot him with Mox at all. I think I need to shoot him with the heavy. Because the heavy does more damage. Yeah, and I don't want to move the heavy because if she doesn't miss, I have mo I have three more shots I can take. And in the worst case scenario, I can still move Mox out of the way. Okay, so these are all 70% chances, which is bad for exactly this reason, because apparently 70% is 0%. I think I can take one shot with Mox until he misses. I can only take one shot because then I have to reload and basically if he gets attacked how much health does he have? One more time he could die which is real bad I will move him out of the way as far as I I will actually just see how the rest of this turn goes basically once I'm ready action music you only have one shot so i need to sh so if i move you i can't use it at all she is pretty accurate but she also okay i'm gonna move her up first so the reaper if she misses she's in a really bad position please don't miss Wait, she was... Oh, that is that is real bad. Well, it's going to be an explosion anyway, so basically I am just going to chuck this grenade. And I can still... Um, so this grenade will explode the car and kill hopefully a lot of these things. And it will also um, reduce the respawn timer on the rest, on, on the next um, mob that will spawn. But it will do that anyways, so I think it doesn't matter if I throw my grenade. Oh, okay, actually it did matter. So I actually spawned a mob now, which is really bad. 
Okay. So basically, with him, I have the choice if I want to take one bad shot with... Well, it doesn't matter, I think. I can move him. I can't take more than one shot anyways. But I can take one shot and reload if he hits it, which he probably won't. Yeah. Okay, so now we're in a really bad position, basically. So... I, oh no, I actually used my uh, last move with my skirmisher. This means that um, I can't move him out of the way. This is really bad. She also does 3 to 4 there, so we're gonna have to use our Reaper, basically. And hope she never misses a shot. And never gets revealed, which is almost impossible. Like, at least. She's probably gonna get revealed now. Yeah. So if she takes a little aggro, it's not the worst. If she takes a little damage, uh, she could uh, avoid mocks getting killed. Because we're pretty much out of actions on this turn, which is quite bad. Yeah, she missed, which is really bad. Okay, so I hope Mox doesn't die on this turn, but he very well might. I don't know if there's any dashers. There seem to be dashers, so he might actually die. I don't actually know what happens if he dies. Okay, so he didn't die, which is good. So these were probably not actually dashers. Yeah, get a room. Oh crap, I actually have to go. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'll see you in part two, or I will find a way to um, work on this for some on some way. Okay, bye.